Hi, my name is Tom Stewart. I'm with the Cleaning Business Today, and I'm really excited to have the opportunity to speak with Marcus Sheridan this afternoon. Marcus Sheridan is an international keynote speaker on sales marketing leadership. The New York Times calls Marcus a web marketing guru. Marcus is owner and partner at Impact. It's a firm that helps small and medium-sized businesses with their inbound and digital marketing needs. He's also a partner at River Pools and Spas. River Pools and Spas is really an amazing story, and I guess it's really where his uh, start in digital marketing uh, began. And um, really important, he is the author of this really awesome book called They Ask, You Answer. And um, I've, I've read it, and a lot of my friends have as well. And it's, uh, it's very useful to anybody running a small business. And uh, most importantly, we all have the opportunity to hear Marcus speak this November at the ISSA show North America. It's going to be November 18th through 21st. Marcus is speaking Monday, November 18th, and he's going to be doing two separate unique sessions for us that day. And... You know, you're going to have an opportunity to hear Marcus explain a little bit more about that, and I promise you, you'll uh, it'll be an experience you won't forget. Hi, Marcus. How are you doing today? Well, Tom, I'm great. Great to uh, to talk with you and your audience, and uh, really excited about the event in November because you know we have an opportunity to to learn a lot and apply a lot and make a big difference with a lot of companies at one time. Uh, a big part of, of, of what you speak on and, and, and teach other cleaning business uh, or just business owners in general about is, is content marketing. Can you explain to us a little bit what content marketing is? Yeah, whenever, you, you know, it's funny, whenever you, you have a technical phrase like content marketing, it immediately can turn off people because it just sees, even says the word marketing in it, right? And so I like to, I like to simplify it in its most basic terms. And, and that is this, content marketing is your company's ability to be the best and most helpful teachers in the world at what you do, all right? And so a teacher, if you think about it, has a set of students. Those students generally have a set of questions. The best teachers are the ones that know how to answer those questions in a way that little Johnny or little Jenny know um, and therefore understand the answer, right? And so that's what it's really all about. And I think it's interesting. People might say, well, I'm the cleaning business. What does teaching have to do with me? But if you really look at the process of making a buying decision, there's a lot of it doesn't matter what you're spending money on, but in this case, we'll just call it cleaning. There's a lot of questions, worries, fears even that potential customers, buyers have that have to be overcome if we want to win them over. And that's why we have this thing called content. And that's, and that's what content marketing is. It's using that information to generate that trust through the power of teaching. Yeah. I mean, certainly in the house cleaning industry, trust is a big deal. I mean, Consumers are giving cleaning companies the keys to their home. And that's it. Well, that's it. That's exactly right. And, you know, the problem, too, is lots of times we, we tend to dumb industries down when we work within the industry. What I mean by that, Tom, is we say things like, it's just cleaning houses. No, no, it's not. And, in fact, there's a whole set of people that have never had somebody clean their house before or clean their, um, you know, their, their commercial location before. And there's varying degrees of what good and bad look like within the industry in terms of service delivered, as everybody knows that's been in the game. And so because of this, we've, we've got a lot of teaching and explaining to do because if you don't do this, here's what happens. When the marketplace isn't educated on what's good, bad, and ugly, you end up having a commoditized industry. One that people just base their decisions on price because they think, oh, cleaning, cleaning. And so I'm just going to go with the lowest price one. And anybody that's been in this game for any period of time knows that you cannot be the cheapest and sustain a really, you know, customer-centric long-term business. It's almost impossible to do. That is, that is, that is true. Uh, you know, if it becomes a race to the bottom where if you're competing on price, it's, it's, it's not a sustainable model. That's right. That's exactly right. So I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to hear you speak before, and it's uh, an engaging, exciting, and um, enlightening process. And, 
you know, anybody who, who has that opportunity to believe a lot of great takeaways for their business. And you, you kind of usually start the times I've heard you, uh, you know, basically introducing yourself as a pool guy that, that you uh, got your start installing uh, swimming pools. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that experience and, uh, you know, how it's shaped your thinking on digital, or, excuse me, uh, content marketing? Yeah, well, you know, like everybody that's listening to this or watching this, I, I was a small and still am small business owner and uh, location-based business dealing with the issues of finding the best help and employees and trying to be profitable and all these things and started this company with two friends in 2001. We were literally installing uh, swimming pools out of back of a pickup truck at the time. We opened up a little retail store and we tried to grow the company. We did, but then all of a sudden in 2008, the market collapsed and I'm telling you what, uh, thousands of swimming pool companies went out of business during that time when the market collapsed and we were in really, really big trouble time. And I thought we were going to lose the company. I thought we were going to file bankruptcy, each one of us, and I was going to lose my home, all those difficult things. And that's when I started to really learn about the way today's buyer has changed and today's digital consumer and how the internet was affecting things and what attracted people online during that buying process, that research phase, and uh, what really led to, to trust. And so as I was reading all these fancy phrases like inbound marketing and content marketing, all that stuff, what I heard in my simple pool guy mind was, you know, Marcus, if you just obsess over your customer's questions, you might save your business. And so that's what we did. We really obsessed over our customer's questions, good, bad, and ugly. We said, we're gonna address them on the website through text, through video. We're going to do it better than anybody in our space. To make a long story short, it became the most traffic swimming pool website in the world. And, um, and it just really exploded the business. And, of course, you know, since that time, I still have the company, but I've, I've opened up a, a sales and marketing company as well because so many people have said to me, hey, Marcus, can you show us how to do that thing? Like you said, the book they asked you answer came out. It's really turned into a movement, which is cool, Tom, because now it's not just a pool company. There's thousands of companies, local, national, big, small, mom, pops, brands, you know, across the board that have embraced this philosophy, this framework, and it's working for them because here's the beauty of it. It all comes down to trust and how can you become the most trusted voice in your space? That's really what this is about. And if I, if I came to anybody and I said, is trust going to be fundamental to your business in 20, 30 years? They'd say yes. If I said something like, well, is Facebook going to be fundamental to your business in 20 years? They're like, uh, I don't know about that. I doubt it. That's exactly right. Because Facebook is a platform, whereas trust is a principle. It has no beginning, has no end. It just is and always will be, especially for businesses. And that's the battle we're in. The, every single one of us, regardless of what we sell, how we sell it, we're in a battle for trust. And that's what I'll help people do especially what I help people do. And when you come to the session, both sessions, that's what we're really going to be driving in there. If you, if you are obsessed like me with becoming that voice of trust and ultimately therefore getting more traffic lead sales, um, this is, this is what you want to attend. The, uh, I guess title of your presentation at the ISSA show North America is the digital consumer and how residential cleaners can reach them. How would you define the digital consumer? Well, if the digital consumer for each one of us is found when we look in the mirror and we recognize how we really evolved as buyers over the last 20 years. And we're prolific because we, we, we love to search online. We love to ask questions. We ask hard questions online. We want to feel like we have a great sense for things before we talk to a salesperson. We want to feel like we have led the sales experience, not the other way around. We want to feel like in many cases, we know more about the business, about the product, about the service and the business themselves do before we make that leap of faith and give that company our money. Ultimately, we hate surprises. We want to feel informed and we are willing to do the research so as to make sure that we're informed we have no surprises and we don't make mistakes. We do that digitally and that's why today on average, 70% of the buying decision is made before someone talks to a company, talks to a salesperson. You know, 20 plus years ago, Tom, that number is probably around 20, 30%. So today we're at 70% with this digital consumer and the number's only growing. 
and it's going to continue to grow. And so how do we win that relationship on the front end before the handshake? This is something that we've all got to address because no matter what happens, it's the rising tide. It's going to come up whether we move our lounge chairs or not. And so <laughs> we need to do something about it. And that's, that's really what this digital consumer is. Uh, a lot of our uh, association members and in, in, in just cleaning businesses in, in general are relatively small. The uh, people who run them, own them, often are wearing many different hats, uh, spread thin, not a, a lot of time to dedicate to marketing or any single discipline for that matter, have yep. limited budgets, limited resources. Is it possible for, for businesses like that to, to reach the digital consumer? Well, it certainly is. And, you know, it's one of those things where what we're going to talk about is stuff that's I'm really focused on what is attainable for anybody. Is it necessarily going to happen with a snap of a finger? No. But, for example, there's essential information that should be on every website if you want to win their trust essential information. And the majority of companies, if you broke this down, let's say there's 10 major pieces of information that every website should have if you want to win their trust over. Not just show that you're a great company, but if, if you want to win their trust. Um, 80 to 90% of those, let's say 10 things, most companies don't have. And so this is a problem. It needs to be fixed. And so we're going to talk about things, actions that companies can take whether they're a, a one-person shop or they have, you know, 10 employees or 100 employees, there's going to be principles that they can apply. Some are going to be able to do it at a greater scale than others, yes, because they have more resources, they have more time. Um, and others are going to make the time to do it better than others simply because, you know, this is life that we've chosen as business owners is, is we're going to control our destinies. And if you want to control your destiny, and that's why you got into business, let's be honest, well, then you're going to have to embrace digital to some, in, in some way, shape, or form. And we can't, we can't do it like everybody else. We can't say it and explain it, the thing that we do, the thing that we sell like everybody, every, everybody else. We really got to see ourselves as teachers of the marketplace. And so we're going to give them the guidelines and the principles to do that within a budget, certainly, something that's scalable, and which is why I'm glad you asked that question, Tom, because it's going to be tailored to them. Yeah, I think that's really great. I mean, when I read your book, one of the things that struck me was, you know, I've been doing this for, for a long time, and I remember back in the day that it was, you know, you could just run a really big yellow page ad and set back and take orders. Yeah. And what's happening, you know, in digital marketing and how you explain your book is it's kind of level the playing field. It's democratized what's happening. Anybody who wants to jump in and, and, and try to reach the consumer by, by building trust has an opportunity to, 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 to compete. Well, this is... This is such a, a beautiful time um, because I see so often digital Davids slaying Goliath within their industries because they can be quicker, they can be more nimble, they can play by their own set of rules for which they can make. And this is why you see companies that are small just absolutely um, pummeling the some of the, the big boys and girls at the top of the industries because they were willing to focus more on what does the buyer really want and do it without all the red tape. They made it easier. They made it more friction free and they're changing the game in their space. Right. And I always like to say that, you know, every industry has, has leaders and generally speaking, those leaders are the ones that set the rules and everybody else is a rule follower. But on occasion, you'll have somebody that's a rule follower, and they'll say, you know what, we're going to do this thing differently, and then they become a rule breaker, right? They break the rule. And the rule breaker eventually, though, becomes the rule maker, because if you're willing to break the rules of, a, of, an, of an industry, do it differently than the way it's always been done, let's say. Now, all of a sudden, we're just going to say, wow, buyers are going to be like, this is exactly what I wanted. Businesses are going to say, wait, you can't do that. But eventually they have to fall in line because the marketplace demands it. And so the rule breakers, they become the rule makers and everybody else that was the leaders, now they become the followers. That's the circle of life and business. And it's spinning faster than it ever has, which is why it is a time for great opportunity. You don't, to your point, have to have the budget for that full page ad, 
for that crazy um, TV commercial campaign anymore. And that's a great time to, to live in. And we have that opportunity. Marcus, I've heard you say that we are all media organizations, whether we like it or not. What, yeah. what do you mean by that? It's good. Uh, it's a, that's a good one, Tom, because at this point, f for buyers, our mindset as buyers is unless we see it, it doesn't, it really doesn't exist. So what I mean by that is I don't just want you to say, well, it's our people that make us special. Well, I mean, everybody says that, especially in the cleaning space. It's like it's our people that set us apart. Well, if everybody's saying it, what does it mean to the marketplace? Well, it doesn't really mean anything. So if I come to your site, if I'm looking at your digital properties, let's say, can I see your people? Can I meet them? Can I get a sense for them? Do I know the story behind them? Because then seeing is at that point, believing. You say you do extra detail in your processes when you service you know, a house or whatever it is. Well, do you show that? Do you show what that process looks like? Why it's different? Why it's more detailed? Why it's worth the additional 20% that you're charging? Whatever that thing is. These are the types of things that we should be talking about and showing, but we can't just be saying it alone because otherwise that's not going to carry enough weight. So you're going to be speaking at the ISSA show North America, November, the show's November 18th through 21. You're going to be speaking Monday the 18th. Starting a party right, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. So lead off with the best. Could you explain what the big takeaways would be for any anybody running a cleaning business would would would, would get from 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 your presentation at the ISSA? Yeah, they're going to get a tremendous sense first and foremost, as you mentioned, a few of these you've mentioned, but how the buyer has changed. Therefore, what we must do as businesses to adjust. We're going to talk about how we can become the most trusted voice in our space, how you can immediately stand out from your competitors, how you can make those buyers look at you, tilt their head and say, huh, they're not like everybody else. I feel different about this company, how you can get more qualified leads, how you can get more leads, how you can shorten those sales cycles in the process. We're going to talk about how to use video as well in the sales and marketing and customer experience process, how you can do it simply without a big budget whatsoever, without you know being a Hollywood actor, but yet still take advantage of it and become very, very proficient with it without being a techie and watch how it affects your business and of course your bottom line. And so there's gonna be lots of takeaways and that's my promise, that if anybody comes to these sessions, you're gonna have a whole lot of takeaways. It's not gonna be a bunch of theory. I'm not into that, that's not my jam. My jam is how much applicable um, information, techniques, tips, tricks, can I give my audience so that they can immediately take it back and say, yes, this is working for me and my organization. That's my commitment. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I can say I've been a member of, uh, of ISSA RxC for a long, long time. I was one of the people that started RxC and I've seen a number of speakers and, you know, you're looking for, for a couple of things. You're looking for meaningful content, useful information you can take back and, and use to make your business better. But you're also looking for dynamic speakers who can, can be entertaining and make it interesting. And Marcus, I mean, you rock on both counts. And I just want everybody to know that, that if, you know, at all possible, they have the opportunity to come out to Vegas and, and see you. I guarantee you um, it's going to be one of the most exciting and, and, and memorable experiences you've ever had in an ISSA show. Um, again, those dates are November 18th through 21. Marcus will be speaking Monday, November 18th. If you want to know more about the show, you can uh, go to ISSA.com. They actually have a, a page, show.issa.com, that will take you right there that, you know, you can register, get your hotel rooms and, and the whole thing. It's, it, it's really easy. Uh, Marcus, is there any uh, last word you'd like to share? You know, I, I think maybe just the last thing I'll say is it's not often um, as businesses where we get to work on the business instead of just being engaged in the business and the day to day. And that's why we come to these events. And it's a, it, one of the best parts about my job as somebody now that gets to travel, speak to these companies is you watch literally how one talk from this event because they're in the right frame of mind, like I said, they're working on their business in that particular moment 
can change their life, right? And there are going to be people that attend ISSA this year that apply some of the things that they that they felt prompted to apply, and it will literally change their life in the life of their employees, their families. That's what it's all about, and that's why I'm excited to be a part of the event. Well, thank you, Marcus. We uh, look forward to seeing you, and again, go to ISSA.com. It's really easy to sign up, and we really hope to uh, see you in Vegas in a few weeks. Thank you, Marcus. My pleasure.